The instrument must remain disconnected from any power supply during cleaning or maintenance procedures. Before the blue instrument hood can be lifted, the drawer must be opened as the drawer locks the hood in place. Once the drawer is pulled out, pull up on the bottom edge of the hood. When the hood is opened, the SD card slot and the sample wheel are visible. The SD card slot has a rubber dust cover that can be opened by pulling the tab on the right side of the cover. If an SD card is located in the slot, the back end of the card will be visible in the slot. To remove, gently push the card about 5mm further into the slot, then release and it will spring out about 20mm. It can then be gripped and pulled out. The SD card is rectangular with one corner removed and also one side has copper pins. It also has a sliding switch that allows it to be right protected. This stops more data from being added to the card. The small grey switch should be in the forward position to allow data to be saved to the SD card. The SD cards can also be folded in half. When folded, a small connector is visible which allows the card to be plugged into a USB slot on a computer. When reinserting the card, there is a sticker on the front of the blue case showing the correct arrangement for insertion. Push the card in until it clicks. We will now look at cleaning the instrument. You will need the accessory kit which you will find in your main Sophia case. It contains tools and cleaning materials. Please remember that the instrument must be disconnected from a power supply during any maintenance or cleaning procedures. To start cleaning operations, the front cover of the sample wheel should be removed. The cover is attached to the Titan nut so is removed when the nut is loosened for the cover to be lifted away. Use the cleaning brush to dust away any foreign material trapped within the insides of the sample handling wheel. The sample wheel can be turned to bring the four cylinders to the top to make them accessible. Warning, the sample wheel should only be rotated manually if the unit is powered off, otherwise gearbox damage will result. The four cylinders can be withdrawn for cleaning by sliding them forwards. This cylinder is the check cell and contains a pre-packed grain sample. This should not be opened but can be dusted with a dusting brush. As you pull out each cylinder, you will notice that each one has a notched rim. These notches line up with the pins in the wheel to make sure they are properly aligned and in the correct holes. As each cylinder is removed, it is a good idea to line them up in the order and rotation they were removed to keep them in the correct order for refitting later. The cylinders can be dusted if necessary and the cavities from which they have been removed can also be dusted. The sample handling wheel can be removed if there is foreign matter stuck behind or around it, or if the cavity is very dirty, but removal is not recommended as part of routine cleaning. If it needs to be removed, this is done by undoing the central bolt. In the toolbox there is a 10mm spanner which can be used to remove this bolt. The sample handling wheel is attached to the central bolt and the two are removed together. Once removed, dust out the interior of the unit with the brush. You will see there is a location pin on the steel spindle inside the unit. Below the spindle is the source of the infrared light. This is often hot. The glass can be dusted with the cleaning brush or wiped with a cleaning cloth from the accessory kit. When remounting the sample handling wheel, the location pin must be threaded through the corresponding hole in the back cover of the wheel to avoid any damage to the motor components. Hand fit the long bolt and then tighten to finger tight with the ring spanner. Put the four cylinders back in position, being careful to line up the notches so that they drop into position. The face plate is also notched so that it will only fit in one orientation. So check the notches and rotate the face plate in your hands to the correct angle before trying to mate it with the wheel. Once in the correct position, it will click into place. Then hand tighten the nut until it is finger tight. Rotate the wheel to check all the notches. Close the hood and drawer, then reconnect the power supply and wait for the instrument to complete the startup test. Once the startup test has been successfully completed, you are ready to analyse more samples.